I do get Doug Gottlieb. He is now joining us. Brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. All right, let's start with this. Jordan Love, third string. I look at that and I think, yikes. That's he, that's undrafted guys, too. Am I overreacting? What's your make of it? You are overreacting, Colin. I mean, Jordan Love is a year away from being a year away. right? That That's how he was sold to us as a draft prospect. And I know that people are going to say that's a wasted draft pick. No, it's not. This is a player who um, has a ton of potential, but it's just that. He didn't even have a good year last year at Utah State. So to anyone who thought he was going to play this year, there's no OTA, no rookie minicamp, um, and he's a guy who's not refined. The Green Bay Packers are playing the future game, and it was a smart play for late in the first round of the draft when all the wide receivers were already gone. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, and to anyone who thinks there's one wide receiver they could have taken late in the first round that would have changed their prospects this year, I would argue name that wide receiver, right? It just he, he, T. Higgins doesn't change the Packers one iota in terms of their ability to make the Super Bowl, in my opinion. And whereas Jordan Love, worst case scenario, he doesn't play for three years, and Aaron Rodgers is great, and they trade Jordan Love, and they probably get a first-round pick in return because he's been trading under Aaron Rodgers for three years. This shouldn't be a surprise. People didn't pay attention. They simply thought and freaked out that because he's a first-round draft pick, he has to be taken. But everyone in the NFL knows he's a future play, not a current play. So I don't think the Raiders were good last year. I think they were awful at the end of the year. I don't think they're good this year. They're relocating, and their offense couldn't move the ball last year, and we like their offense. Your thoughts on the Raiders, and is there a bad team from last year in the NFL that you actually like this year and you think flips it? Okay, well, there's two parts to that question. Right. First, the Raiders, I, I would agree with you on, from this standpoint. Do I think they're a playoff team, even with the expanded playoffs? The answer is probably not. Um, I think the Broncos still don't know exactly what they have at quarterback, but they've rebuilt their roster. It's pretty talented. You and I both have a great amount of respect for the Chargers roster, even though they've lost their best player, Derwin James, of the year. We just don't know about Tyrod Taylor. I will say Tyrod Taylor doesn't turn it over and is mobile. Those are the two things that Phillip Rivers didn't do last year, right? He turned it over a ton, and he's completely immobile. Chargers think they'll be better. So that division is stacked, and we know what we all think of the Chiefs. I would, I would challenge you this. I think the Raiders have been hurt more by not having fans than any team in the National Football League, right? The whole plan was to build it for this year, for the crescendo, for the new uh, Allegiant Stadium, to be just a madhouse when the Saints come in, and now there'll be nobody there. So I, I think they're really hurt by not having fans in the stands. I believe they'll be a much better football team. I think that, that this combination of Mayock and Gruden is rebuilding the roster. It is going to be a long, sustainable build. But do I think that it ends up being a challenger to the Chiefs in the AFC West? No. We all know that they're not committed long-term to Derek Carr. They don't think or know he's the guy, which means he's probably on his way out unless he has some spectacular season. And that, that means to me, without full commitment to your quarterback, you're not great. But are you better than you've been? Absolutely. Think about the roster that they took over going back three seasons ago. Think about the moves that were made. They were all building and building and building. And hopefully they would get the support of Raider Nation flying in on Southwest from L.A. and, and Ontario and Oakland to Vegas. Now they won't have any of that. So I'm not as down on the Raiders long term as you are. But short term, I generally agree with you in arguably the most talented division in football they're not a playoff team as for do i think there are bad teams that can from last year that can make the playoffs i think everyone's talking about the Kansas, about the uh, arizona cardinals i'm intrigued because i do think they have a dude at quarterback right uh, murray is a spectacular talent i do think that they have some pieces on defense although it took a while to figure out how to protect the quarterback and how to play defensively considering how they're playing offensively and that also is a very so for them to make the playoffs, you got to not believe in the Rams. you got to not believe in the Seahawks. you got to not believe in the Niners. That's a hard one. But, but they're one of the teams. And then, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who were a bad team last year, but, or a below 500 team last year. You add Tom Brady. You add some other pieces. I do think they're a potential playoff team this year. And then the Falcons are another team who, if you look at the midway point of the season where it felt like everyone was getting fired, when they put Raheem Morris in charge of their defense, suddenly everything changed. The Falcons, the Buccaneers, 
Arizona Cardinals were three non-playoff teams who had expected to challenge from playoffs. And NBA, I said earlier, if, if last night was a regular season game and you trail by seven late and you got a game tomorrow night, Denver, young team, played with urgency, probably wins the game. But it's the playoffs. Doc calls a timeout. They trail by seven, fourth quarter, six to go, and says, fellas, time to play defense. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and it was like, that's the difference between a regular season game last night and a playoff game. The veteran coach timeout, Kawhi, Paul George do their thing. What do you make? I mean, Kawhi is getting a lot of talk about the one finger block, but what did you make about the last six minutes of the game and the Clippers defensive energy last night? Well, I thought it was phenomenal. I thought it was championship caliber stuff. I think you pointed out that they're, you know, you said how Houston and LA can't win the title. And I do think that one of the reasons is because the gear that we know the Clippers have, I also think we got to give some credit to Paul George, who we all crushed for the self-given playoff, uh, playoff P nickname. And I think the, uh, the, the mental issues, the mental health issues that he went through in the bubble, I think are very real. And I think other players have suffered through some of them as well. It's just not a normal way to live your life, to compete and to, to, to play your profession, to be in a bubble for two and a half, three months. Um, look, they're the best team. They're the team to beat. I don't think there's any arguing of it. But I, I, I also think that Kawhi Leonard's ability to change a game defensively is something we've seen from very few. LeBron James, obviously, one of the others. And it's why I would consider him the best player in the league. It's what changed with Kevin Durant the last three years before he got hurt, is he decided to buy in and, and be a, a, a very good defensive player. If you can play both ends of the floor, you can make up for a lackluster offensive night. I, I, I'm with most people, though. I was a little disappointed the Clippers slept walk through most of that game, but also impressed by their ability to flip the switch and then close the deal and beat the Denver Nuggets. By the way, not too much time, because I know Milwaukee's not a fascinating team, but to me, it's this is going to be one of those teams like the Phoenix Suns or Sacramento Kings that we thought were going to reel off a title or two, and then you wake up one morning and go, they may not get there. Do you, what do you do? What do you think happens in Milwaukee a year from now? What do they look like? I mean, I, I, my guess, and, and by the way, I don't think we thought they were going to win a title, right? Me and you. No, no, no. I thought I, I, I had the Clippers. I think we both had the Clippers winning. Right, but I had the Clippers going against the Celtics. I just I, there's there, there's it's not just Mike Budenholzer as a coach. I think it's the style of this team. Um, and look, you know, some of the guys that that have been maligned have stepped up and played well when when Giannis has been out. Like, let's give them credit. Giannis gets hurt. Giannis doesn't play. They could be eliminated, and they step up and and make plays. That said. They're not going to win three more games in the series, especially if Giannis can't play in two of those games. I, I don't see that happening. Um, I see panic. Right? That's what happens with people. He may not sign a, ma a super max contract this summer. That sets in, it, it, you know, sets up, up for one of those years where they try and throw everything at it. Look, the mistake that was made was made last year. Malcolm Brogdon was a 50, 40, 90 guy. Would be their starting point guard. He is solid defensively, a much better shooter than Eric Bledsoe. They gave the money to Bledsoe. Brogdon went to the Pacers, which isn't a great fit. And I think that if you put Brogdon on that team, they go to the NBA Finals. So they made some mistakes in personnel yeah. over the past couple of years, specifically last year. I think they panic. I think they changed some pieces. I'm not sure it matters, but they're not winning this year. And I think Giannis likely turns down a Supermax contract, even though he says, like everybody says, oh, I want to stay here. I want to stay. They all say they want to stay <laughs> until it actually comes the moment where they have to sign their contract. Yeah, I agree. But keep your eye on Miami, by the way. Bam, Giannis, Jimmy Butler, Eric Spolstra, pretty good roster potentially. Air, uh, Doug Gottlieb. Wait, wait, what, what, but why would they change? Why would Miami change? Why, why do you have to add more? I don't understand. Like well, Miami's really, really close. Those young guys are really, really good. Well, close and winning championships. I mean, Pat Riley has been – Pat Riley knows you got to go get a Shaq. You got to get a LeBron. You can be close with Jimmy Butler. You want to win next five years? I think you need another big star. That would be my guess. It's, 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 can I give you one more thing? Sure. Isn't it fascinating that you have two former MVPs, and Giannis is going to be a two-time MVP. They can't shoot. And Russell Westbrook, you're leaving. He's what you call in the NBA open for a reason, can't shoot. And, like, look, LeBron at times has struggled with his confidence in his jump shot. But it really is fascinating that here you have two, what I think anyone would deem superstar players in a Russell Westbrook and Giannis Antetokounmpo, 
who cannot shoot a basketball don't have it's not just confidence in their jump shot lebron it's a confidence thing with those guys it's there's something flawed screwed up with russell westbrook's jump shot and there's been something changed with Giannis's jump shot which has made it worse not better yeah doug gottlieb duggar fox sports radio after my show good stuff buddy thanks uh nice beard thank you thank, if it's a beard i'm not sure if this qualifies hi everybody thanks for watching subscribe here to get the latest from the show also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.